Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about dynamic delays as well as how you can turn any effect into a dynamic effect. So lately I've been setting up a virtual guitar amp set up with separate plugins in Reaper. Uh, it's not the most efficient or easy way to do it, but uh, I'm just trying to find like the best sounds and also zero latency um, with a guitar rig setup. And so one of the plugins that I've been using is the Air Dynamic Delay. And it's just a simple delay plugin but it has some really good features that make it great for playing guitar. So let's hear the guitar on its own. And here is the air dynamic delay. So a dynamic delay or a dynamic effect is one that comes up when you stop playing. And so you hear all those echoes, but those echoes don't clutter up what you're playing. So this has it built in and it's really simple and it gives you the option of controlling how much feedback is reduced or how much the mix is reduced. And I like a little bit of both. And so I've got it set up like this in the envelope mod section of this plugin. I've got the rate set at 347, so it's going to wait 347 milliseconds before it brings up the feedback. And as I'm playing, it um, is reducing the feedback amount by 44% and the mix by 48%. The overall mix is at uh, 32%. So these, these controls kind of interact with each other. The feedback and the feedback uh, envelope mod interact with each other, and it waits a certain amount of time before it comes up. So I'm going to set these to zero. And if I play it again, so here it's a little bit more cluttered. And so about to the same settings. So it really cleans up the sound as you're playing. Uh, every note is clear. And then when you stop playing, those echoes come in. Really cool effect. And so let's look at how you can do the same sort of thing with Redelay, Reaper's built-in delay. So we're gonna do this with parameter modulation. And to do this, you set the parameter where you want kind of the loud section to be, or the loud part of the dynamic effect to be. Um, and then you go to the param menu, parameter modulation MIDI link. And so I'm gonna bypass those for now. And so let's hear uh, re-delay doing the same sort of thing, same delay time, basically the same filtering and feedback amount. <laughs> So actually I have the, the mix a little bit different. I have this more at like 50-50. But you can, you can hear that it really gets in the way. So I have parameter modulation set for the wet uh, slider here, as well as the feedback slider here. So I'm gonna enable that. I've got these set up kind of how I like for a similar effect to uh, the air dynamic delay. Sounds like this. So let's do this for the feedback. I've got, uh, when you first bring up this window, it's gonna look like this. This slider is in the middle, and you enable parameter modulation there. Then you choose what type of controller is going to be used here. And in this case, it's audio control signal sidechain. But we're actually going to use the same signal that is on the input to set this up. So one and two, and then you got to... 
With the feedback control, you got to make sure that it doesn't go above zero or you'll get a feedback loop that can be pretty bad. So now I'm just adjusting the, um, the baseline level uh, to be around minus six, because that sounds pretty good for this guitar effect. I've got the attack set pretty fast with the release at 150 milliseconds, moving in the negative direction. So when I play, you can see the feedback slider goes down when there's a loud sound. So it, it moves based on how hard I'm playing. This is going to be really dependent on the type of sound you're putting in here, you know, the signal level, all those sorts of things. As far as I know, there's no way to kind of compress the signal before it comes in here. And that would be pretty cool if you could have a compressed audio control signal so that it's not so dynamic, it's not moving quite as much. But kind of the strength slider um, determines that how much that moves around. So I've got that strength slider at 30. So there you go, that's something I've been playing around with recently, and I think that dynamic effect is something that's really useful in a lot of cases. So I hope you can put it to good use, and thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. <laughs>